I'm really a sound artist more than a musician. Where I have to live and where I'm nourished on such a deep level is this land of extremes with infinite views and the kind of inspiration that just naturally at every moment is flooding me. And I get out and engage in it and merge with it at a level where it becomes visceral and translates you know, directly to the dynamics in my music in terms of the kind of intensity of the land and the beauty and the quiet and the stillness. It's a beautiful rhythm of life. It just felt like it was uh, something I was naturally born with to do. It just opened amazing doors that it's been nonstop for all those years, all the way till last night at almost two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Your music is considered ambient music. I'll often refer to it as what you might hear in films or soundtrack music, something that you immerse yourself in or that you can have playing in as a supportive environment. It's both energetic and calming and, I mean, all these different moods I can think of that I've, that I've experienced while listening to your music. That's, you know? that's perfect, beautiful. Ultimately, I'm creating to externalize these spaces that I want to expand and immerse in for longer periods of time. Early on, uh, I was hearing the instrumental music from, say, Pink Floyd or some of these bands from the 70s and into the 80s, and there would be instrumental passages that would start to open up these epiphanies and these sensations, that, and they were never long enough. They would be an opening to something on a Yes album. It might be, you know, a minute and a half or something. And I said, I, I really want to take this and make it 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes long, or have it loop and play all day long. It's very intentional music to shift and alter and expand your perception or enhance your perception. So I'm very mindful of all those physical reactions and responses that I have with the music. So my body becomes a tuning instrument when I'm creating uh, these different spaces. What do you see as the, the, both the power of music and maybe the healing qualities that are there in music? It's very much deliberately designed to support your everyday space in, in a way that can be calming or it can help focus or it can help expand your creative mindset. I feel like it's almost like I'm writing a prescription. So how did you move into the tribal rhythmic? I mean, did you have some experiences? There's this device called a sequencer and it's basically this electronic tool that lets you create rhythmic patterns that can repeat from now till the end of time. So I could create these rhythmic patterns electronically that would start to open up states of awareness in your consciousness that were very trance inducing but also very expanding in a like a peak experience kind of way. And so I started feeling this natural segue between the electronic world and a lot of the shamanic, rhythmic, indigenous rhythmic music from around the world. That was a natural segue for me to start incorporating more of those elements with clay water pots from Mexico. And I was starting to collaborate with some artists from around the world. I met up with uh, David Hudson, a very well-known Aboriginal didgeridoo player in Australia from my travels there. I started to infuse that, though those acoustic sounds interweave that with the electronics. So there's an organic aspect that was so powerful, and, and especially in the albums that were that was first realized, Origins and Artifacts and Suspended Memories, Forgotten Gods and Earth Island. These albums really have this piece where you're bringing air and you're bringing atmosphere into the world of synthesizers and electronic. So many different types of music has the ability to connect to the deeper part of yourself, the expansive part of yourself, and the place of self-care and creating sanctuary with sound. You're hopefully documenting a peak experience. When I release an album, it's really about taking the essence of a certain moment in time, distilling that, and having the ability to discern where the real energy and power is in that, and then giving it back to the world. If I didn't do that, the circle would not be complete. And so I've been completing that circle for a, a many years on a, you know, a lot of albums now. Each album is it's like a different kind of process, of, you know, a rite of passage that takes me and, my, and, and the audience that's expanding with me to that next place. So that 
energy that comes from sharing the art at that level and then doing concerts and having that collective, like we're in a collective dream together in a concert is where there's something really powerful about that. When I present my music live, it's so hyper real and so vivid and so ecstatic and dramatic and internal, all of those emotions are being brought up. I love your music. I recently came to understand that you have received a second Grammy nomination. The first one was something that came out of the sky, kind of like this wind blowing it in <laughs> dramatically. It was just it was shocking and, and, and validating and just deeply resonant. And then to have it happen a second year was really like lightning hitting twice, at least at, at this level for the you know, nomination it alone to me is like a, a win itself. In many ways, some of your music forms are very old mm -hmm. and some ways are very new because of technology. You were speaking to me earlier about a particular person who was influential to you. Robert Moog created this synthesizer that was one of those paradigm shift moments where right. all this stuff evolved because of the right time, the right place, the choices they made when they made the instrument, and then their whole campaign when they brought it into the public and how they brought it into uh, music stores. Without his influence and impact, we wouldn't be talking right now. I'm still using versions of his big walls of knobs and patch cords and all this stuff. Well, that's all come back into vogue right now because it's a hands-on experience. It's not digital at all. It's pure analog. So you're building up these sounds molecule by molecule in a sense or part by part. So there's this whole beautiful learning experience and relearning and re-remembering and, and, and new discovery that happens when you just build sounds with the, what we call the modular synthesizer. And so it's more than just music, it's the philosophy of how you approach it every day, how you devote yourself to being uh, vulnerable and being spontaneous and being courageous to create and to put it out there. For me, sound and my relationship to sound as a language of the soul is like breathing. I can't wait to share that with you and with everyone.